Did you know that Apple has an application specifically designed for employees to be able to order their food? Remember that this video only has educational and entertainment purposes, so do not try to get any of these apps as that is not legal. The most interesting thing is that there are hundreds of internal apps, but we only have information about a few of them. In this video, we're going to see the most interesting ones. To support the channel, you can like, subscribe, donate or leave a comment, I always hoard them. Thank you. To understand how most of these work, we have to talk first about Apple Connect. This is a network and authentication system that provides access to certain internal programs only intended for Apple employees. It has its own application for iOS and macOS that lets you sign in with a password or gesture-based login. You used Switchboard to update and manage other internal iOS or macOS software. It seems to have been discontinued in 2021 though. Alternatively, you can use the App Shack introduced in iOS 13. It allows you to download other internal stuff like AR Maps, Jarvis Demo, Livability, and a Siri Beta. This is known because there are ways of accessing the App Shack via a web browser, but to avoid any problems, I won't share the URL. The official replacement for the switchboard is self-service. In order to gain access to to it, your device must be associated with a Jamf Pro server that is distributed via email when you first connect to Apple's VPN. You can only download apps available to you depending to your position at Apple. Speaking about the app that I mentioned in the intro, that one is Cafe Max that lets employees order their food at certain Apple campuses placing remote orders. Reportedly, it lists information like calories fat, carbohydrates, sugars, protein, and fiber. You can pay your food with a meal program or voucher, with a payroll deduction, and with Apple Pay. Phantom is used to safely and securely share videos with other employees, mainly with the ones that design videos for upcoming Apple events. Phantom generates a custom URL that, if visited, shows the shared video. To report bugs, we have Radar. This software actually had an artwork as a mascot that was eating bugs in reference to what this program is used for. It has five stages, analyze, integrate, build, verify, and close. Similar to GitHub, each bug referred to as a problem has an ID and a priority, like showstopper, expected, important, and nice to have. For the second stage, after notifying the appropriate engineers, they can begin developing a solution with a target build and for which it must be fixed by. Then, the fixes are built, it is verified that they do fix the issue, and the problem is closed with a certain message, such as item completed, duplicate, cannot reproduce, behaves correctly, not to be fixed, third party to resolve, and insufficient information. It seems that this interesting program has been discontinued though, but a more easy and automatic version is tap to radar that detects problems automatically and if it encounters one, it shows you a pop-up that if tapped on, automatically reports the bug. To report Apple Maps bugs, you use Skyline, which allows you to set a point of interest as having the wrong name, address, category, or other information. There is also a people, groups, rooms, buildings, and stores directory app that shows you internal info about what you looked for. Canvas is an app used to test the iMessages handwriting feature, allowing you to enable multiple options like anti-aliasing, zoom, split view, and more. This is a fun one and probably one of my favorite ones from the list. TouchFinder is a source code demo and one 
one of the iPhone SDKs. You had to rock your iPhone back and forth in order to move the ship, and tapping the screen would make the ship shoot. The only way to exit it was to hit the home button. Even though released in an official SDK, it was removed later. Some people got the chance to quickly compile it and upload it to Cydia, which is a store for jailbroken iPhones. The repo has been since shut down, so it is probably lost media and could deserve its own video. It is a little weird because visiting the Touch Fighter 1 page redirects you to the second game swan, and there doesn't seem to be a screenshots for the first game, making people believe that the first one and second one are the same game or that the first one never existed. If someone still has the source code, they can probably rebuild it and publish it somewhere. Reliability allows you to test and see the status of your device's parts, like compass, gyro, accelerometer, and proximity sensors. It has an alternative version just called Alternative Reliability that does the same thing, but has a more modern UI and uses mostly food for icons, being known by some as fruity reliability. Internal settings is like the settings app, but on steroids, as it has some pretty advanced settings, like letting you set a battery limit for the low power mode, toggle sending locks to Apple, or hiding the status bar for the replay CAD framework. You probably have seen the iPhone retail demo apps like the Face or Touch ID apps that let you test these technologies without actually locking the phone and saving your fingerprint or face. The pricing app that displays the specs and price of the device it is installed on, or the screensaver app that displays a looped video stored within the program's root directory. iOS devices also have commands at root, user, local, bin, that can be executed. Between these, it is believed that you can define curl, gsub, ssh, and trigger obliteration, a program that wipes your data and system partition, rebooting into a factory fresh state. This command is executed when you press on the break device button in the internal settings. To restore an iOS device from a Mac, you can use purple restore that can flash an image to iDevices, providing more customization than iTunes and allowing you to personalize iOS builds. It is believed that Apple limits this tool in order to avoid leaking internal builds and prevent users from downgrading. Fake tunes can back up, sync, transfer, or replace information from your devices like iTunes does but as an internal counterpart. iOS menu has the ability to control your iPhone and interact with it from a terminal, seemingly connecting via SSH or SFTP. iRemote X is reportedly a tool used by Apple to remotely control its devices. There are two options, observe and connect. The first one mentioned wouldn't give you control over the device, but the latter would, giving you options to control the digital crown and the power button. Stack is a macOS software that is able to run scripts for multiple i devices located at home, library, application, support, stack, script. Finally, I would like to mention some interesting details about the Springboard, the default user interface for the iPhone that also manages graphical services from icon badges, the dock, multitasking, and folders. It is a stacking window manager, rendering applications as children, as well as toggling the memory of the programs it launches. Since iOS 6, some of its responsibilities have been moved to the backboard the daemon, processing the touch bands first. Cydia can modify the springboard, adding third-party extensions that tweak the look of it. Well, these were the most interesting Apple internal apps. Let me know which one was your favorite one. Remember that I also take video suggestions. Goodbye, see you in the next one.